Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about focus shift shooting and focus stacking so that you can create more depth of field in your images. I've come out to my local area this evening and like I said, what I want to talk about is focus stacking and focus shift shooting. So focus stacking is a technique where you can create more depth of field in your scene. So you'll take a number of shots at different focus points within your scene and then you'll combine those together in software to create an image which has greater depth of field than what you would otherwise get if you were just taking one shot. And this is often done in macro photography where you close up to your subject and the types of lenses you'll be using will mean that even at a really narrow aperture like f22 you're still going to get parts of your subject out of focus. And focus shift shooting is a feature on Nikon Z6 and Z7 cameras. I think it's also a feature on the D850 DSLR camera as well, and perhaps some others, I'm not sure. Uh, if you do know, perhaps leave a comment below if it's on any other cameras. It's a really useful tool that allows you to automate that process, and you can set a number of shots, and you can tell it to change the focus distance between each shot, and then set it going, it'll automatically take those shots. But if you don't have a Z6 or a Z7 or a D850, or a focus shift shooting mode on your camera, don't worry, because you can still do this technique manually. All you need to do is set your camera into manual focus mode, take a shot, change the focus, take another shot, and keep doing that throughout your scene until you've got all the areas of your scene in focus. And then, later on in this video, I'll show you how to combine those in Photoshop to create one image that's all in focus. I'll put some timestamps below in the description, so if you want to skip forward to that part, you can do. Focus shift shooting is not only for use with macro lenses, you can make it work with any lens really, wide angle telephoto. I've got a 15mm 1.8 prime on at the moment. And to access the focus shift shooting feature on the Z7, you press the menu button on the back, you need to go into the photo shooting menu. And the quickest way to get to the option is to actually scroll upwards. So press up, you'll see silent photography, press up again to the next screen and you'll see focus shift shooting at the bottom there. So click OK to go into that and you'll see a number of parameters. You've got start at the top, then you've got number of shots. It'll change the focus in between each shot. So I'm going to put in 20 on mine. The next option down is focus step width. So that just changes the amount, the focus changes between each shot. So I'm going to, for this landscape shot, I'm going to choose a kind of midpoint between narrow and wide. But you might want to experiment depending on the lens you're using and how close you are to your subject. Interval until next shot, that's just how long the camera waits before it takes the next shot. So you can actually set that to zero, but if you're using a flash or something you might want to set that to a particular amount of time between each shot. First frame exposure lock, you're probably going to want to put that on. If you don't, you might end up with a different exposure between each shot and that's going to cause you problems when you try to stack those together later. Then you've got peaking stack image and silent photography. Peaking stack image will, if you turn that on, it will create a little preview, if you like, that you can look at to check that everything is in focus in your series of images. So that's quite useful, just to give you an impression of whether you've got all the focus right in your scene before you get home and get it onto the computer. And silent photography, obviously that will make the uh, shutter silent if you require that. Okay so I've got this simple scene before me now. We've got the field leading up to the horizon, some clouds in the distance with the sunset behind them. I've got my 50mm 1.8 on like I said so it's got a really wide maximum aperture and if I focus on my nearest point which is these wheaty things, technical term, then what's going to happen is everything beyond that point is going to be out of focus 
because I've got such a shallow depth of field at 1.8. If I focus on the horizon, the kind of furthest point away, the top of the field, I get much more in focus, but my foreground is out of focus. So I can try increasing my F number to give myself more depth of field, but even F16, which is the maximum aperture that this lens will go to, I still can't get everything in focus. So the only way I'm going to get everything in focus with this lens is to use focus stacking. I'm going to set my F number to around about eight. So I'm going to focus on my nearest point because the way that focus shift shooting works, it starts from the front and then each subsequent shot focuses further and further into the distance. So I'll just focus on that near point, go up to start, and it should start taking those shots. We've had some pretty thick cloud rolling now and it's blocking out the sun. But I think I've got enough shots just to get back, get those on the computer and we can create a stacked image out of those. It's not gonna be the most amazing shot in the world. It should be enough just to demonstrate how focus stacking works. So let's get back home, get those on the computer. I'll see you there. Okay then, so here we are in Lightroom. There were a few different shots and compositions that I liked, but I've decided to go for this one. I mainly just like the light that was on the field and the nice dark cloud in the background gives a nice contrast. There's not really much else in the image, so I'm going for a bit of a minimalist look with this one. Something just quite almost abstract or graphical where you've just got the image split in two with the green, yellowy green feel at the bottom and the dark blue sky at the top. So. Here are all our images that we took using focus shift shooting. If we see this first one, you'll see down here at the bottom, we've got all the, I think it's wheat. I want to say wheat, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not a field expert or <laughs> crop expert, but all these are nicely in focus at the bottom here. And then if we move to the next one, we start to get a little bit further into the scene and we keep going and it's gradually going further and further back in the scene so we're around about halfway now and then when we get towards the horizon we can see that those little crops on the horizon they're all nicely sharp and in focus so I'm not going to go through all of my colour and tone edits in this this is mainly about focus stacking but I have made some edits to this, mainly just to bring up the shadows, bring down the highlights. I've tweaked the presence a little bit with the dehaze, clarity and texture, and I've just slightly altered the colours just to give the clouds a little bit more of a purple look. And just to bring out some of the, the yellow in the field. But not too much. And what I want to do is just sync those changes across all of the other images so what I'm going to do is just select all of those and then we can click sync down here have everything ticked because we want to copy everything and just click synchronize and that will apply the changes to all of those and then you can just right click on that set go to edit in and down to open as layers in Photoshop and then that will open up Photoshop so depending on the speed of your computer, the file size of each image and the resolution, etc., it'll take a little bit of time to bring those into Photoshop. But once it's done crunching the numbers, all of the images should appear down here in the layers palette on their own layer. If I just turn all of these off, we've got the first one there, second one, third one, fourth one, and so on. So what we need to do is blend all of those layers together so that it only shows the bits that are in focus and hides the out of focus parts of each layer. And the way we're going to do that is by clicking on the top layer there, scroll into the bottom, hold shift on your keyboard, and then click on the bottom layer. That'll highlight all of the layers. And then we can go up to edit. And if your layers are slightly out of line, so if you're using a tripod, it's probably not going to be an issue. But let's say, for example, you were shooting handheld or your tripod wasn't quite stable enough. Some of your images might be slightly out of line with the other ones. And you can use auto-align layers to automatically put those into alignment for you.
but I think mine are okay. So I'm just going to click on auto blend layers, which is just below there. And that brings up this little window and we don't want panorama. We just want to click on stack images. I'm going to select seamless tones and colors. That'll help things just blend together a bit better. And I'm not going to click on content to air fill transparent areas. So we'll click OK and then just let that go to work. And once it's analyzed each of those layers, what it'll do is apply a mask to that layer. So you see that one, we've just got that part and then we've got that part on that layer and so on and so forth. And Photoshop will automatically just blend those together so that you've got an image which appears to have focus from front all the way to the back. So if I zoom in down here at the front, you'll see really nice and sharp. And if we go up to the horizon, likewise, they're really sharp up there as well. So the effect is that you've got a much greater depth of field in your image. And then all we need to do is bring that into Lightroom again. So we'll click save. And then we can come back into Lightroom where our image will appear. And all I'm going to do with this is just crop out this tree, I think, on the side because, like I said, there's nothing really much in the photo. So I want it to be minimalist and quite abstract. Therefore, the tree is not really fitting with that. So I'm just going to crop in. And I'm going to put a slight vignette on it just because I like vignettes. It'll just help darken the top of that sky up a little bit and uh, just draw the viewer into the photo a little bit. And that's it. That's the final image. I've only recently become aware of the focus shift shooting feature on the Nikon Z7. I've got to say it's really useful. You can do it handheld, but when you're focusing manually, you can just slightly nudge your camera in between shots and that can bring your images slightly out of alignment. And like I said, you can fix that in Photoshop later to an extent, but it's really useful to have the camera just automate that process for you. And it'll do it really quickly as well, so that if you've got any change in lighting conditions, you're not going to get a dramatic change from shot to shot and that makes it much easier to stack them together in Photoshop later. But don't worry if you haven't got this feature on your camera. Like I said, you can do this manually. It just takes a bit more of a steady hand, get a nice stable tripod, and just be really careful when you're focusing in between each shot. And when you focus stack those together in Photoshop, you can get some really good results. And this could be really useful for macro photography, because when you're using specialist macro lenses and you're really close up to your subject, you've got such a narrow depth of field that being able to focus stack like this could be a really useful tool. Unfortunately, my macro lens is a Takina and it doesn't autofocus on the Z body. So I can't use that with the focus shift shooting, but as soon as I get a lens which works on the uh, Z body, I'm definitely gonna give that a go. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. I am celebrating a little bit of a birthday for my channel at the moment. So I really appreciate everyone watching over the past year. I can't believe it's been one year already. That's just amazing. And it's been an amazing journey. I've been to some fantastic places. It's encouraged me to get out each and every week. My photography has improved and I've met some amazing photographers and YouTubers through doing this, as well as getting fantastic comments from subscribers and really positive encouragement all around. So thanks a lot, everyone. I'm up to nearly 900 subscribers now, which I, again, I can't believe that. Uh, if you want to help me get over that 1000 finish line or not a finish line, but <laughs> next milestone line, then uh, why not subscribe? If you like this kind of content, then you can click on the big red button down there or on my face over here. And then that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. So that's it for this one, but I hope you will catch me for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot and bye for now.